Welcome to another edition of our faculty interviews, UC Berkeley Division of Social Sciences. I'm Christian Gordon, and today fortunate to be joined by Professor Ethan Katz from our Department of History and the Center for Jewish Studies. Professor Katz recently wrote an article, uh, opinion piece published by CNN entitled, Far More Unites Black and Jewish Americans Than Divides Them, co-authored with Deborah Lipstadt. Uh, Professor Katz, can you tell us why you thought it was important to write about black Jewish relations at this time, uh, what prompted this article and how it's connected to your prior body of work? Sure, uh, thanks so much for having me on. So my starting point was in some ways what I work on, which is Jews and Muslims in the uh, Francophone world in France and its colonies. Uh, that's what my first book was about. And that's a story where Jews are constantly trying to figure out how they relate with a large ethnic minority group that faces systemic racism, uh, primarily uh, North African Muslims uh, in the French colonies and in France itself, uh, while themselves having a constant history of discrimination as well. Uh, the most lethal episode uh, being when a quarter of French Jews were murdered in the Holocaust. Uh, but Therefore, Jews see their fates sometimes align with another group facing racism, uh, and a, a disproportionate number of Jews support uh, efforts toward equality for North African Muslims. But at the same time, Jews are sometimes dissociating themselves from this other group as they strive for equality uh, in their own right. And overall, Jews uh, have a, more opportunities systemically, structurally, to achieve full citizenship in France uh, by far than uh, Muslims from North Africa over uh, the course of the long 20th century. So that got me thinking about Jews and African Americans uh, and the parallels between uh, that history and the history here and, and the present here. Uh, and I was really moved to think about what are Jews' obligations today in terms of joining the struggle for racial justice? How do Jews acknowledge that if you're white and Ashkenazic, like most American Jews, you enjoy certain elements of white skin privilege, but your position is also more complex than many white peoples? Uh, and so Deborah Lipstadt and I kind of opened a dialogue about that uh, several weeks ago and agreed that if we could figure out a way to write about these issues together, Jews' position and Black position, and how Jews should be positioning themselves vis-a-vis -vis the current struggle, uh, that it could be helpful to opening up some conversation. So you're seeing many parallels between the experience of Jews and Muslims in France and the situation of Jews and Blacks in America today. Yes, exactly. I mean, if we look over the course of the 20th century, uh, in both places, Jews by and large achieve a very high level of integration. And again, we, we're talking specifically Ashkenazi Jews, um, especially in the American context, but in many ways they become thought of by most people as racially white. Um, wasn't necessarily the case in the 1930s, 1940s, uh, when Jews faced redlining, for instance, in American neighborhoods in many cities like African Americans did, right? Uh, but at the same time that Jews are integrating, uh, they are often joining the black civil rights struggle, uh, and they're often seeing, uh, or, or excuse me, in, in the French case, the uh, Algerian uh, struggle for equality, um, but they're also experiencing their politics through a kind of enduring sense of vulnerability. Uh, so they have this combination of a greater capacity to advocate for the rights of others, but also a still not entirely integrated sense of where they reside in the American or the French polity. So tell us about how it's been received, starting with what did you and Deborah Lipstadt hope would readers would take from this article, uh, and then tell us what you've been seeing. So our goal was really to try to open conversations, right? Uh, the piece really focuses on how Jews ought to be able to find resources in their own experience to understand what Black Lives Matter as a slogan and a movement really is about. That it's not about ethnic particularism, that it's not about saying Black lives are more important than other lives, 
that it's about a group who's had a distinctive experience of 400 years of often lethal racism that persists to this day. And that Jews and blacks both, despite vast differences in their general station in American life today, and even in their histories, that they both define themselves through histories where they have been persecuted, they have faced violence, they have been on long quests for full equality and freedom that have long been contested, right? And that Jews could find within their experience, therefore, resources to understand what Black Lives Matter is about and to be really empathetic and supportive and at the same time, we wanted to be able to point to reasons that Jews have been uncomfortable with the Black Lives Matter movement because of certain statements that have been made by leaders in Black Lives Matter at certain rallies of Black Lives Matter that have been very harsh toward Israel, that have really sounded anti-Semitic to many Jews, even, even you know, whether or not they were intended that way, and to try to kind of walk people through why Jews have their own experience historically that sensitizes them, just like African Americans do. The idea ultimately is that if each group can understand the other's history better, we can begin more constructive conversations. And what are your thoughts on moving these types of conversations forward? They're obviously very uh, difficult uh, for people to have. And there's been a lot of discussion recently about the uh, public forum and acceptance of diverging views, conflicting views. How do you see this and, and related conversations moving forward in this environment? And how can we promote it? Um, we have to keep trying. Uh, I've been encouraged by the fact that the response to the article has actually been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, I think you know many people have told us things like, you know, that we sort of said a lot of things they were thinking about, but hadn't figured out kind of how to put together or articulate. Uh, so I think there is a sentiment out there of people who want to be able to have constructive conversations, uh, of people who want to acknowledge the really deep structural racism that persists for African Americans and the need to join the struggle to really root that out. Uh, at the same time, uh, the Jews are facing rising anti-Semitism, and that that issue has been substantially ignored by many of those advocating anti-racism. Uh, and it is very much tied up with the politics of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and the international politics of that conflict. Uh, so figuring out how to talk about racism and anti-Semitism together, I think, is a priority for a lot of people. Uh, and so part of our idea was to give people a little bit of a roadmap for how to start uh, doing that. And I am hopeful that uh, this conversation will continue to grow uh, because there are a lot of people invested uh, in finding ways to talk. Well, Professor Katz, thank you for your work. And thank you again for this piece. Um, you can find the, the link in the notes below the video. It is on CNN entitled, Far More Unites Black and Jewish Americans Than Divides Them. Professor Katz, we'd love to check in with you a little bit down the road to see how this is progressing. I think that'd be great, especially because we're in a very hotly contested election year where all of these issues are percolating uh, as well. Well, stay safe, good luck with your work and the upcoming semester, and we'll look forward to speaking with you soon. Thank you. Thank you.